Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this video is about a question on vectors from one of the Solomon papers, a collection of past papers from, I think, papers way in the past. Um, this is from a Mechanics M1, and it's a question that I have included in one of my end of topic worksheets for my students. I think it's question 12 from the vectors worksheet in M1, and one of the students has asked me to answer this question, um, so I will do so. So, part A of the question. First of all, two trains A and B leave the same station O at 10 a.m. They're both leaving at the same time, 10 a.m., and travel along straight horizontal tracks. A travels with a constant speed 80 km per hour due east, and B travels with a constant speed 52 km per hour in the direction 5i plus 12j, where i and j are unit vectors due east and due north, respectively. Show that the vector, the velocity of B is 20i plus 48j kilometers per hour. Okay, so now we need to find the velocity of B. Now what we have so far in this question about B, we're told that B travels with a speed of 52 kilometers per hour and a direction 5i plus 12j. Now a velocity is a quantity which is a vector quantity which has a magnitude, a size, and also a direction. So we know the magnitude of this velocity and we know its direction so we have to write we have to find a vector which has this magnitude and is going in that direction so the speed of b okay which you can say is the magnitude of the velocity of b is equal to 52 and the direction of b is given by 5i plus 12j so the vector that we want the velocity of b we know that it's going to be um, in the same direction as 5i plus 12j. So it's going to be some multiple of 5i plus 12j. I like to write these as column vectors in my calculations. So the velocity b will definitely be something times 512. Be something times 512 because it's parallel to this vector. Vectors that are parallel to each other have the same, um, have are multiples of the same vector basically. So combining these two facts together, I can say that the magnitude of the velocity of b can also be given by the square root of 5k squared, 5k all squared, plus 12k all squared. Okay, which gives you the square root of, that's 25k squared plus 144k squared, which is 169k squared, which gives you 13 Okay, so what we can say here is we know that 13k is equal to the magnitude of b, which is 52. So therefore, we can say k is equal to 52 over 13, which is 4. So I know that the velocity of b is 4 times the vector 512. That's a vector with the right magnitude, but also going in the right direction. So if you write this in i and j notation, it'll be 20 i plus 48 j and that's exactly what we had to show as mentioned here okay that's how we can show that another way of doing it is to say that we need to know we need we know the velocity of b is going to be 52 times okay a vector in the same direction as this but one unit long 52 times one will be 52 you see so the magnitude of this vector is 13, as we saw. This will be 1 over 13 times the vector 5, 12. And that will give us 4 times 5, which is 20. And 4 times 12, sorry, 4 times 5, which is 20. 4 times 12, which is 48. Okay, so you get the same answer. It's just a different way of thinking about it. Both ways are perfectly fine. Okay, for, for part B... We're told to find the displacement vector of B from A at 10.15 a.m. Okay, so the displacement vector, R it's called, is given by R0 plus V times T, where V is the velocity vector, and R0 is the position vector of the point at time equals zero. Okay, so in, in this case, let's take A. We're told about A that and B, both of them, that they start at the same time from O. So we can say that 0, 0 is our initial position for both of them. So R0 is 
zero zero for A and also for B. Put the information for B here. R zero is also zero zero. Okay, then we need the velocity of A. Now the velocity of A, we're told that it travels with a constant speed of 80 kilometers per hour, so that's its magnitude, due east. So it's just basically 80 times I. Okay, 80 I. So which is like 80 I and 0 J can be written in column form this way. And the time is 10.15 and of course they gave us these speeds in um, per hour. So the time is going to be um, 15 minutes, okay, which is quarter of an hour. So it's one quarter of an hour, okay, 0 0.245 hours. And for B, we know the velocity of B, we just found, and they were told, we were told what the velocity of B was anyway, 20, 48. And of course the time is the same when they're going to be at 10, 15, 15 minutes after they started, which is a quarter of an hour. So we can write down here that for A, its position vector after 15 minutes is going to be given by 0, 0 plus V times T. So it's going to be basically a quarter times 80, 0, which is a quarter of 80 is 20. That's 20, 0. That's the position vector of A after 15 minutes. And the position vector of B, we'll call it RB, after 15 minutes is going to be a quarter times... 20, 48, okay, which is 5, 12. Okay, so what they're asking us to find here, however, is the displacement vector of B from A. So let's just say we have O at this point here. Um, A will be due east of it, 20, 0 at that 10, 15, and B will be at 5, 12, so, so like somewhere up here. Making a rough diagram. So A would be somewhere over here and B would be somewhere over there. This is RA and this is RB. And they want to find the vector of B from A. So B from A would be the vector taking you from A to B, which is going in this direction over here. So if I want to go from A to B, I've got to do minus RA plus RB, which is the same as RB minus RA. So what they want us to find is RB minus RA, which is 5, 12, take away 20, 0, which gives us 5 minus 20, which is negative 15, and 12 minus 0, which is 12. So there is the answer for what they're asking us to find here. Minus 15, 12, that's for part B. Okay, so that's the displacement vector of B from A at 10.15 a.m. That's part B done. Now part C, um, is over here. It says, given that the trains are 23 kilometers apart, T minutes after 10 a.m., find the value of T correct to the nearest whole number. So, okay, so let's go back to the position vectors at any time T. That was for A was 80. 0 times t and for b it was 20 and 48 times t okay so t minutes after 10 a.m okay so um we're going to find it in minutes let's just change this to capital t because they want the t in minutes and we've been using the t in hours so let's just for this part of the question Call it capital T, and we'll change it at the end in terms of minutes. So now, the trains are 23 kilometers apart from each other after 10 a.m. Okay, so we want to find the time at which that occurs. So let's just think about, you know, the same kind of diagram that we drew before. Okay, we, we don't know exactly what this will look like, but this just tells us how to find how far apart they are. So this is RA, this is RB, and we want to find the vector either B to A or A to B, it doesn't make any difference because the, the distance between these is what we're concerned about, whether we're going from B to A or A to B. So the distance apart from, they are apart from each other. So if I do the same thing, if I do RB minus RA, but this time having in terms of T, we'll be able to find the vector that represents how to get from 
A to B. A T zero T, so it's all going to be in terms of T. You'll have 20 T minus 80 T, which is negative 60 T, and 48 T minus zero, which is 48 T. So this vector represents the distance between R, the A and B. Okay, any particular time T, this T is in, is in hours. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to know when the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this vector which tells us how to get from B to A is 23 kilometers. Okay, so if we find the magnitude of this vector, it's going to be minus 60t all squared plus 48t all squared square rooted. That's the magnitude of this vector and that has to be equal to 23. Okay, so let's see what this will give us. We're going to have um, 3600 square. Let me just use a calculator for this. So you're going to have basically 60 squared plus 48 squared. That gives you, whoops, plus not times, plus plus 48 squared, that's 5904, okay, t squared, so the square root of 5000, whoops, the square root of 5904 all squared, t squared, sorry, 5904 times t squared equals 23, okay, so the square root of that, 12 times root 41, so basically, you're going to have um, 12, one second, sorry, you're going to have 12 times root 41 t is equal to 23, so the time is 23 divided by 12 root 41. It's not 41, sorry, 12 root 41. Okay, and what will that give us? We've got this, 23 divided by the answer. Will give us 0 0.29933. That gives us 0 0.29933. 29933. Now this is in hours. Now they want the answer in minutes. So our time in minutes is going to be the answer that we got. 29933 in minutes times 60. Okay, so that's going to be, take the answer, multiply it by 60, and it gives us 17.959, 17.959. Now this is going to be now in minutes, but the answer is requested to be given to, what does it say, the nearest whole number. Okay, so we round this to the nearest whole number, which is 18 minutes and there we have the answer for that question okay so we need to define that when the magnitude between a and b is 23 basically so we found the vector that takes us from a to b in terms of t and then we found it's we, we worked out an expression for its magnitude and then we equated that to 23 and we found the time that took place and we converted that into minutes so there we have the answer to the question